Welcome back to Book Break. It is book haul time. Every month I get the most exciting email of my month from Elle, the other half of the Book Break team, with pictures and information about some of the most exciting books we have published over the last month, and then I tell you guys about them. So without further ado, let's dive straight into the email. The first book in here is... Oh, a beautiful one, Blackwater Sister by Zen Cho. I have seen so many of you guys raving about this one already. It says on the front, she was trouble, so is her ghost, which is such a great tagline. And that is referring to our main character's grandmother, who has recently died and now is haunting Jess, our main character, as a ghost on a mission. I've talked about this book in a few different book break videos already, such as the quirky fantasy books video, which I will link to below, but honestly, nothing I can say about this book is as perfect a description as what the author herself tweeted about it, so I'm just going to bring that up. Okay, so this from Zencho herself. A stressed zillennial lesbian fights gods, ghosts, gangsters and grandmas in 21st century Penang. Fantastic. Can't wait to read. Okay, next, I Follow You by Peter James. So Peter James you may know as the author of the Roy Grace series. This one is a standalone thriller that is now out in paperback. Such a creepy cover this one. I'm sucked in already. It says I Follow You dot 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 until you are mine. So this one is about a man who becomes completely obsessed with a woman that he sees. He actually nearly hits her with his car when she's out jogging and then he can't stop staring at her because she looks exactly like the girl who dumped him and broke his heart when he was a teenager. So even though he now is this successful doctor with a wife and kids, like everything seems perfect, he gets completely obsessed with this woman that he is sure he used to know. Then Yours Cheerfully by AJ Pierce. So this is the sequel to Dear Mrs. Bird. This is another one you may have heard me raving about a lot on this channel. Dear Mrs. Bird is one of my favourite books of all time, so it is so exciting that there's now a sequel that picks back up with our main characters, Emmy and Bunty. They are still reeling from some of the terrible things that they went through in the first book. It is a very jolly book, but it's also set during the Blitz. So obviously they go through some tragic events. And in this book, we see them picking themselves up, putting on a brave face and being determined to make a go of it. And Emmy has a job as a wartime advice columnist, which she's brilliant at. It's actually the job she was doing in the first book, even though she wasn't supposed to be doing it. Uh, but also Emmy and Bunty in this book are going to find out a little bit more about some of the challenges that women are facing. So it's very much about the really important role that women played in the war effort. Okay, oh, from a very happy one, we're going to a very sad one. Heaven by Mieko Kawakami is about two teenagers who are being really, really severely bullied and the friendship that they develop with each other as the only people who understand what each other is going through. If you've read Breasts and Eggs, you will know how brilliantly Mieko Kawakami writes teenagers and what's going on inside their minds. And also she has this really interesting writing style that kind of interrupts the narrative with these quite philosophical meditations. So yeah, a deep one, a dark one. Then we have a gorgeous one. This is Chris Riddell's Through the Looking Glass and What Alice Found There by Lewis Carroll. So I will honestly buy anything that Chris Riddell has illustrated. He has the most gorgeous trademark illustration style that just really brings stories to life, but also gives them a new life. He draws them in sometimes slightly unexpected ways. He's just fantastic. Everyone who has read a book illustrated by Chris Riddell is a fan for life. That's just a fact. Also you'll notice that Alice on the front here has brown hair, unlike the blonde hair that you'll see in the Disney movie and a lot of film adaptations. The real Alice, who Alice in Wonderland was based on, did have brown hair. So we are going completely away from the Disney versions to the real life Alice in Wonderland. Then we have another gorgeous illustrated book. This is The Woolly Bear Caterpillar by Julia Donaldson and Yuval Zoma. This looks so beautiful. A little caterpillar with big hopes, how sweet. So I think this is gonna be a kind of ugly duckling Cinderella story about this little caterpillar who isn't as pretty as the other caterpillars, but maybe will undergo the most amazing transformation of all. And it looks, the illustration style really reminds me of 
a lot of books that I grew up with as well, so it's quite nostalgic style. It looks stunning. And then, oh, Joe's Family Foods, so another Joe Wicks cookbook with a hundred delicious easy recipes to enjoy together. I want to eat what he's got there. So the idea here is that these are all really easy, quick to make recipes so that you, as a busy parent, can spend a bit less time in the kitchen and a bit more time as a family. And they're also recipes designed to be great for every member of the family. So you can all share a meal together and feel very happy. Now this one, Rabbits by Terry Miles. This one I talked about recently in our books if you're looking for something a bit different video. So this is actually based on the podcast, Rabbits, which was a fiction podcast, but in the style of a documentary about this virtual reality game. So the book is set in that same universe. And the idea is there is this game that has been going on under all of our noses all along. And if you start to notice it, so you might start to notice strange little coincidences, like the same number showing up again and again throughout your day, or little discrepancies in the world around you. Suddenly a building looks different than it did the day before, Watch out for the clues because it might be time to start playing the game. Next, we have some non-fiction, The Utopians by Anna Nima. So this is about six attempts to build the perfect society. It's basically this deep dive into six communities throughout history that attempted to be this utopian community that were small and kind of dismissed at the time, but still have influence today. So anyone who's interested in ways that we can create these more utopian societies, this is a really fascinating look at the times people have tried before and what has worked and what hasn't and what the legacy has been. This one is another non-fiction, No Fixed Abode. This is the paperback. Uh, so this is all about life and death among the UK's homeless population. This book contains some very sad, very upsetting stories about the lives of homeless people, the violence that they face, the tragedies that they face, how they got to the stage in their life and how they are now so ignored a lot of the time by the housed members of the population. Uh, but there is hope in here as well. One of the most important things is this book shows that the homelessness crisis, while terrible, is not impossible to solve. Then going back to fiction, this is Fragile by Sarah Hillary. So this is a kind of modern twist on the classic book, Rebecca. It's a gothic mystery. A lot of people have also said that it's got kind of shades of Patricia Highsmith in the writing. The story is about Nell, who is a former foster child, a runaway with a dark secret she's desperate to keep, who shows up looking for a job in this grand house. But Nell may know a little bit more than she lets on, and her arrival here might not have been pure coincidence. Then some fantasy, Witch Shadow by Susan Dennard. So this is book number four in the Witchlands series. This is one that's been pretty anticipated. So let's see where we are in the series. The description of this book says, war has come to the Witchlands and nothing will be the same again. If you are fully invested in this series already, let me know in the comments below or maybe leave a witch emoji. I know there are some mega fans out there. Then back to some non-fiction, this is Sentient by Jackie Higgins. Also, how gorgeous is this cover? So this book is kind of a tour of the animal kingdom, of the natural world, and sort of drawing parallels between how animals experience the world and how humans experience the world, seeing where those are the same and where they're hugely different. But what's really cool is that some of the ways that these different amazing animals that you meet in the book engage with the world can kind of open our eyes to the sensory powers that we're not using and help us engage with the world in ways that we didn't even think were possible. Next, this looks like a fun holiday read, A Very French Wedding by Maeve Haran. Escape to the chateau and live the dream. This looks gorgeous. Holidays are still very up in the air at the moment, so maybe you can just read this book instead and pretend that you're in France. So this is about friends Steph, Joe and Meredith, who've been friends since school, but their lives have taken very different paths. But Meredith then buys this romantic chateau in the Dordogne and invites her two old friends to come and help her do it up and make the house gorgeous. 
ooh, and then when a handsome chef and his equally charming son show up, it seems that the village has more to offer than just sun, wine, and delicious French food. Best holiday ever. Then another holiday one, but a lot bleaker. This is Summer Water by Sarah Moss. So this is the paperback. I love this new cover. Summer Water is set all in one day in a Scottish caravan park and we jump constantly between the various characters there. So you really get to experience all these different perspectives as tensions rise on this one rainy day with all of these families in close proximity. It's very much about our current world, about the tensions that have sprung up, particularly post-Brexit. It's very human and it will really, really stick with you. Then Blue in Chicago, so this is the paperback of Betty Howland's short story collection. So Betty Howland is this kind of rediscovered sensation. She's this incredible writer who was sort of hailed as this major new talent and then completely disappeared from public life. But now everyone is getting very excited about Betty Howland all over again. So this is a gorgeous collection of her very sharp, very funny short stories. Oh, and then while we're on the Betty Howland theme, this is W3, her memoir. So this is just out in hardback now. So W3 was a psychiatric ward, Ward 3, and Betty Howland was one of the patients who stayed there after swallowing a bottle of pills. So this is a very moving memoir about her time spent in this psychiatric ward and how she sort of wrote herself back into life. Then a new MCL, The Yellow Wallpaper by Charlotte Perkins Gilman. It's one of my favourites. It's a classic novella and now we have it in the Macmillan Collector's Library. So add this one to your collection. It also comes with Herland, another of Charlotte Perkins Gilman's stories. The Yellow Wallpaper is basically about a woman who was given, who was prescribed the rest cure. Uh, so she literally is just told to stay in bed, to not write, to not work, to not interact with her new baby and she just becomes increasingly um, delusional. She becomes convinced that there is a woman in the walls behind the yellow wallpaper. So it's this quite frightening story where we just get to watch her descent into paranoia and madness. Herland, on the other hand, is quite jolly. It imagines a utopia populated solely by women who have been managing just fine without any men at all. Thank you very much. Then The Running Book is now out in paperback. So this is John Connell's story of how running helped him through a mental health crisis in his own life. John Connell lives in Ireland in County Longford and the book describes a marathon through the land where he lives and where he farms and it's about the physical experience of running but also about the mental experience and how the kind of simple act of putting one foot in front of the other helped John restore this sense of himself and better appreciate the world and life around him. Then one for the Kristen Hanna fans, this is Wild. So you may have heard of this one, it was previously published in the US as Magic Hour. So if you've seen American reviewers talking about that, this is this book. It's about a woman who must escape her past, a child who must unlock her future. So to give you a bit more explanation of what that means, it's about a six-year-old girl who is found in the woods and has no memory, she doesn't speak, she has no clue as to her identity and who she is. Uh, so a child psychiatrist who has recently retreated to her hometown to escape a scandal that threatened to destroy her career, uh, this woman is called Dr. Julia Cates, she starts working with this little girl, she names her Alice, and she's determined to discover the truth and help Alice work through all of this fear and isolation that she feels. And they're gonna create a bond and they're gonna discover things about themselves and each other. Now, some children's books, Mooncat and Me by Lydia Corey. This looks cute, I haven't seen this before, so let's read what it says. With colourful pages thronging with modern city life, Mooncat and Me tells the story of Pearl as she overcomes the anxiety of moving house and starting a new school with the help of a giant white cat. Love that. 
And then another children's book, We Want Our Books by Jake Alexander. Again, I haven't seen this until right now, but this looks fantastic. All about saving libraries, very important. So this is described as a defiant, moving and joyful picture book about the power of protest and the importance of books. Amazing, love that combination there. So Rosa wants a book, but when she gets to the library, she finds it is closed. What could be the end of the story is just the beginning, as Rosa and her sister Maria try everything they can think of to bring their community together and fight to get back their precious library. Love that, that sounds really inspiring. Then back to some grown-up books, The Light Years by Elizabeth Jane Howard. So this is the first book in the Casale Chronicles series, which is a very beloved book series. You may already know and love it very well. And these are brand new reissues. So this is the front cover of the first one here. You can see it's gorgeous. But what's really fun about this series is that all of the new reissues, if you put them together, the spines create a beautiful picture. I will find a picture to show you of what that looks like. It's gorgeous. And we're still going. There's a lot of books in this month's haul. Great publishing month. Next we have Think Like a Breadwinner by Jennifer Barrett. So this is a non-fiction book about how women can earn more and worry less. So this is really, really important because women are now apparently the breadwinners in one in four households in the UK. And yet women were never really taught how to be breadwinners or think like breadwinners. Overall, we know there's a lot of conversations about how women can earn less and save less and are less conditioned to ask for more money and to invest in their future the same ways that men are encouraged to do. And so if they do end up the breadwinner of their household, as one in four do, uh, they feel quite unprepared and it can be quite a scary position to find yourself in. So this book completely reframes what it means to be a breadwinner and dismantles all of the negative stereotypes that we have around women and money. Then we have A Shock by Keith Ridgway. So I remember this, but I can't quite remember what it's about. I'm going to look at the description now, but this is a literary fiction novel. In A Shock, a clutch of more or less loosely connected characters appear, disappear and reappear. They are all of them on the fringes of London life, often clinging on to sanity or solvency or a story by their fingertips. Hmm, that sounds really, really intriguing. Next up... Oh, this is the first in the Marcus Rashford book club. So this is called A Dinosaur Ate My Sister by Pooja Puri, illustrated by Alan Fatima Haran. Uh, and this is the first book that Marcus Rashford is including in his book club. So that's really, really exciting. I will link below to the Instagram account for the book club so you can go over and check it out. Marcus Rashford, we know, is just amazing and he is really, really passionate about getting books in front of children because he says that reading changed his life when he was growing up and he kind of wished that he'd had more access to books or been encouraged to read more because it was in books that he found representation for the first time and found imagination. It kind of let him unlock worlds other than the one that he was living in. So I absolutely love that. I love how passionate he is about getting children reading. And this is the first book that he is officially promoting, A Dinosaur Ate My Sister. I think I can guess what it's about, but let's just give it a look. So it's a time travel adventure, mixture of Jurassic Park and the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. And it says here, before you start reading, there are a few things you should know. One, I, Esha Verma, am a genius inventor extraordinaire. Fair enough. Two, there is nothing I cannot invent. Three, I did not mean to send my sister back to the age of dinosaurs. That was her own fault. Mum and Dad, if you're reading this, please take note. And it looks like there is just one more in here, and that is Notes from Your Therapist by Alison Dineen. This is a book about feelings. So you may know the Notes from Your Therapist Instagram account. Again, I will link that below if you want to go and check it out. Alison Dineen is a therapist and a mental health counsellor who shares on her Instagram these gorgeous little handwritten insights and affirmations and just little words of empathy that so many people engage with and find just so gorgeously helpful. So here is a collection of them in book form if you ever need these reminders. So there you go, that was a great haul for June. Let me know in the comments below which of those you're most excited about or if there are any other new books that you've just hauled this month that you think other people in the comments should know about. This is the time for book recommendations. I will link here to a playlist of all of our other book haul videos so you can go back and browse through some of the other books we've talked about. And I'll see you next time.